In a recent video that went viral on YouTube, a so-called expert who was really just masquerading as somebody who knows what he's talking about but doesn't, claimed that electric cars catch fire and explode far more often than gasoline-powered vehicles or than internal combustion engine vehicles. He said it's happening all over China and all over the world, and they're far more dangerous than gas-powered vehicles, and therefore they should probably be banned. Now, is this true? Are EVs more dangerous? Do they catch fire more often than gas-powered vehicles or internal combustion engine vehicles? Or is this just more false information peddled by doomsdayers, clickbaiters, and people paid by the oil and gas lobby? Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. John Carey from Australia said for evcentral.com.au that this isn't really just a single question, but two questions. The first question is this. Are EVs more likely to catch fire than internal combustion engine vehicles? And the second question is whether or not EV fires are actually worse than internal combustion engine fires. EV fires don't seem to be more frequent, but it's early days. And we won't really fully know the answers, he claims, until we see more EVs on the roads. Videos of burning EVs are very easy to find online. People say they're exploding. There are plenty of them. It's not hard to figure out why. Internal combustion engine powered car fires are not unusual. I've been in one. We were just driving along and the car just set fire to itself and I don't know why. Who wants to watch footage of something that's so common it's unremarkable. No one watches them. He's right. It happens every single day. There's hundreds of thousands of gasoline powered vehicles, internal combustion engine vehicles that blow up or set themselves on fire constantly. EVs are, for most people, something new and something unfamiliar. And what's new and what's unfamiliar is scary. And therefore, it's something we should hold at arm's distance at least, right? Just the way that I'm doing that with my phone every day. The way that you do that when you put your phone to your ear, you should be scared that the battery, that that electric battery could blow off your head. Well, maybe this isn't really true. Is this a myth created by the media to get you to click? Or is it a myth created by the oil and gas lobby to stop you from buying EVs and to keep on buying their products? Could be a bit of both, is what I think. When an electric car burns, it's almost guaranteed to be filmed and uploaded. The fascination is understandable. Humanity hasn't had more than a century, as with internal combustion engine vehicle fires, to get used to the sight of an EV in flames. And he's right. Imagine if we saw this every day, all the time. Imagine if there were EVs burning all the time, like was what happens with gas-powered cars. We wouldn't think of it as being remarkable. It would just be common. And it wouldn't be that interesting. But unlike burning EV videos, finding data from a reliable source on the frequency and likelihood of an EV catching fire is quite difficult, he says. There's a lot of information out there on the internet. Nearly all of it is untrustworthy. Many authors start from dodgy assumptions. Some of the work of self-styled experts with an agenda, almost always with an agenda, a pocket calculator and absolutely no idea how to reach a sound statistical conclusion. Others are the work of businesses looking for a way to attract some attention. Electric scooters and bikes are also getting caught up in the hype about lithium ion battery fires. I mean, many people are saying that these vehicles and these products are catching fire all the time, but personally, I've owned actually nearly a hundred different devices with batteries in them of some type, and none of them have ever caught fire. Those include electric scooters electric skateboards. In fact, I actually have 13 different batteries for electric skateboards. Electric cars. I own, I've owned two Chinese electric cars. Now, it is true, though, that some of these batteries do catch fire from time to time. Mine haven't, but sometimes they can. And that's one of the key reasons why the industry is moving towards lithium iron phosphate batteries and sodium iron batteries. They're much less likely to catch fire. In fact, it's very rare for those battery chemistries to catch fire. Now, BYD have had some of their vehicles catch fire in China, and it has made the news headlines. Contrary to YouTubers and what they're saying, no, the Chinese government doesn't suppress this information. 
it's widely available and easy to find. In fact, it goes viral on Chinese social media pretty much instantly, and it's never removed. What's very easy to establish though, is that EV fires are in absolute terms quite rare. Here's a good and verifiable example. London Fire Brigade dealt with 1,898 petrol and diesel vehicle fires in 2019, compared to 54 EV fires. But comparisons like this only highlight the fact that in London, as in many other wealthy places in the world, internal combustion engine powered vehicles vastly outnumber EVs. It tells us nothing about whether an EV is more or less likely to catch fire than a passenger vehicle with an internal combustion engine, but it's worth keeping in mind that every single one of those EV fires in London was not a lithium iron phosphate battery pack. It was a lithium turner pack with the majority of them being produced by LG Chem who have had more battery recalls than every other battery company in the world put together over the past three years. This is where it gets really tough though to find good information from trustworthy sources, says John Kerry. Those whose full-time job is to track the data are cautious about reaching definitive conclusions. People like Richard Billyield are one example. He's the Chief Technical Officer at Thatcham Research, the respected outfit established in 1969 to conduct testing and analysis for the UK's car industry. Our latest research indicates that the risk of a fire for all types of EVs remains less likely than for internal combustion engine vehicles, he said in a recent interview with US business magazine Forbes. Now it's important to point out, he doesn't have an agenda either way. He is not incentivized to spread information that's pro for EVs or pro gasoline powered vehicles. He simply is an unbiased observer. And he said, it should be noted that the usable data only goes back five years. And even now the number of EVs on the roads still represents a very small sample size. Bill Yield, an engineer though, also said that Thatcham Research conducted crash testing of EVs in UK on behalf of Euro NCAP. Despite the robust impacts to the front and particularly the sides of the vehicle where the battery is most vulnerable, there have been no resultant thermal events in our testing of all EVs we tested, he said. Now, the interesting thing is, many people say that if when an EV catches fire, it will burn like hell. You've heard the fire brigade say this, the media say this, they are death bombs waiting to explode and to kill everyone within a small radius. If you're in the car, it's certain you will die. Death is inevitable. But tests show that EV fires are actually not more intense, contrary to what the media has actually brainwashed you into thinking. Even EV fans, the majority of them believe this information. The evidence here though is quite clear, says John Kerry. There's not a whole lot of difference between EV fires and internal combustion engine fires when it comes to either intensity or the overall amount of heat released. Now, a lot of the naysayers are using this example. They say this, an EV battery pack is always holding the same energy density, whereas a gasoline or petrol diesel powered vehicle has varying amounts of fuel. For example, the average tank probably only has half the fuel in it, whereas a battery pack is always holding the same amount of energy. Therefore, it's much more likely that when that battery pack catches fire because of all the extra energy it has versus the gasoline, it will explode and basically kill everyone within earshot, which obviously is an exaggeration, but you get my point. However, we know that this isn't true because of some excellent work done in 2022 by a group in Korea working for the country's Fire Testing and Research Center. What did they do that was so good? They burned five Hyundais, three Kona EVs, an internal combustion engine powered Kona, and a hydrogen fuel cell powered Nexo fuel cell vehicle. Why three electric cars? The Fire Testing and Research Center wanted to measure the difference, if any, between a standard Kona EV with a 39 kilowatt hour battery pack and a long range Kona EV with a 64 kilowatt hour battery pack. They also wanted to find out how much the battery pack contributed to the fire compared to the rest of the vehicle. To do this, they removed the battery pack from another Kona EV, it was a 64 kilowatt hour pack, and burned the battery pack and the remainder of the vehicle in separate fires. In every case, the total destruction of the test sample took no more than 70 minutes. The nature of the experiment meant no attempt was made to extinguish the fires. 
And this is actually in line with reality. The truth is that in the real world, it's very unlikely the fire brigade will arrive before the car has incinerated itself completely, regardless of the type of vehicle that it is, whether it's an EV or an internal combustion engine vehicle. Everything was burned in a special test rig. Suspended above it was a massive cone to suck up the products for combustion for analysis. Each vehicle was fitted with multiple sensors and each test was videoed from multiple viewpoints. This was serious and seriously expensive testing. Now John says, let's move on to examine the results of the work that they did. The peak heat release rate, basically intensity for both the whole EV fires was lower than the internal combustion engine equipped Kona. The Kona with the smaller standard range battery pack was less intense than the one with the larger pack, as would make sense. It'd be like um, burning a, an internal combustion engine vehicle with a bigger fuel tank. Of course, there's more fuel. It's gonna burn harder and hotter. The hydrogen fuel tanks of the Hyundai Nexo being subjected to extreme safety tests showed an interesting result. Looking at the total heat release from ignition to burnout, the EVs both released a little more than the internal combustion engine vehicle. The fuel cell vehicle released easily the most heat overall. Isn't it interesting that we never ever hear this kind of thing about hydrogen powered vehicles? In spite of the fact that when a hydrogen refueling station in Norway, which is relatively small in size, actually ignited and blew up, it killed 11 people, 11. The most interesting results are those from destroying the battery pack and the rest of the vehicle in separate fires. These show very clearly that the battery pack contributes only a fraction of the total heat released in an EV fire. And it's nowhere near as devastating as what the media would have you believe. The combustion of the plastic, rubber, and other flammable materials used to make the Kona EV contributed more than five times the amount of heat released by its 64 kilowatt hour battery pack. It's likely the proportions are similar for other EVs. However, it's worth keeping this in mind. When Sandy Munro tore apart a Tesla EV with its new 4680 battery pack, he found a special heat retardant that had been used to glue all the cells together, which was quite different to other electric cars. He said that this would mean that pack would have less flammable material to burn. This isn't to say that EV fires aren't without they're particular and peculiar dangers, says John. But clearly, what the media has been telling you for a long time is false. The actual heat that comes in an internal combustion engine fire is more intense than that in an EV. But the heat that comes from a hydrogen powered vehicle is significantly more intense than both that from a gas powered vehicle and a lot more intense than that from an EV. But friends, thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and make sure your friends see this video because this is the stuff we need to tell everyone. You've been basically lied to and misled by the media or maybe by some vested interests. Let me know what your thoughts are. Bye-bye.